Hey YouTube, so I decided to do another one of these ottomans. Uh, this time, this, this is a mud cloth ottoman that we're going to be doing. Um, same as before, only I'm going to be using more modern techniques. I'm going to be using the staple gun. Um, so you're going to see a big difference in how long this takes, first of all. So I wanted to take you right through the whole process, including just getting the package in like this. So this is a manufacturer overseas, sends the ottoman, I'll open it up. Nice package, and like on the other one, this I think with the with the mud cloth is a great underlay. It's not that I'm being lazy. I mean, I think that it's brand new that we don't have to take it off. But we, with, on this one, I am going to take off the cambric, and uh, we're going to put our own piece of cambric on. Um, take the cambric off first, and we have in the package. Uh, we don't have to worry about this yet. It's packaged up with the legs in it like the other one. I'm going to put those aside for now because we don't want to upholster with the legs. They just, they just get in the way. You'll see. Cut. Okay, so we have our stool. Um, we're going to go over the cover, which is fine. I mean, anybody at home that doesn't want to go over the cover, you have a problem with that, just take the cover off and you'll have a, a foam base here and there's a little Dacron in there. But uh, having a base like this for the mud cloth with such a loose woven material as, we, as you saw in the other one, that, that I think is desired, okay? Desired to have a nice base. So cut, cut your cover about three inches more that you need and that you measure underneath. So what, you mean is, what I mean is you measure from here with my fingers all the way to the other side, add three inches. That's what I did. So I'm going to place, I picked out a, a design on this, which I liked. And that's, that's a preference usually for, for you guys, whatever you want. As long as it's going to fit the ottoman. I mean, you can't use something too close to an edge, obviously. You won't fit it. So what we're going to do is we're going to line up our diamond. This is a nice diamond shape here. I'm going to, uh, this is the center point. I'm just going to, I don't want to eyeball that. I want to take my tape measure and I'm going to measure that side to side. So I've got 22, 11 inches. Half of that's 11. I'm going to draw it this way a little bit because it was just a little off. 11 there. And then we're going to come this way. 9 inches. We're dead on with the 9 inches there. So, so, okay. so we're ready to go. And we're going to be using our stable gun. I'm kind of excited about that because it's going to go fast. So what I'm going to do is, first I'm going to do is I'm going to do the sides here. I'm going to hold it down like so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin staple. If you've seen some other videos where the pin staple is, again, this is probably for only advanced people with their gun, and used to your gun. I'm not putting this staple in all the way. I'm actually putting it on a little to the side. I'll show you, I'll show you what I did in a minute. That's not a permanent staple. Okay, and then I'm going to bring it over to here. I'm going to give it a little pull this way, and I'm going to semi uh, staple, meaning I, I take the head of the gun, I'm going to show you this in a minute, I'm going to flip this over, now that I got this where I want it, I'm going to flip this over, and I'm going to show you here what I'm doing with the gun, be very careful, you're taking the head and you're just turning it, okay, so what this is, what this is saying is, I'm not ready for a permanent staple, okay, you're going to take them out in a minute, I'll show you, so I got that side done, now I'm going to do the opposite side. You're always doing opposite sides, right? I'm going to pull it and I'm going to staple it and get three over here. So now I've got it all pin stapled instead of pin tacked. For all the, those you still using tacks, that's fine. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the original spot, which is over here. Actually, I'm just going to kind of straighten out. Uh, by the way, these mud cloths have a, have a natural tendency to go off a little bit and they're actually made that way so but what I'm trying to do is just make them as straight as I possibly can using my eye before I go any further okay I like that so I'm going to turn it over I'm going to go back to the original side and I'm going to undo one staple and I'm going to stretch I'm going to actually two-way stretch I'm stretching this way and I'm stretching this way. It's actually a diagonal stretch, but it's easy to tell people stretch it to think two ways, okay? And we're going to permanently staple right there. And then in between, I'm just going to take my hand and just kind of bring it up, smooth it up, and I've got that one side done. 
I'm going to repeat over here. Leave the middle one in for now. Same stretch, staple, roll it up, stick, stick, staple, and then undo this last staple that's a pin staple, release it, and then what we're going to do is just draw it up just a little bit because it could be a divot. I'm going to go to the opposite side. I'm going to undo one staple. I'm going to diagonal stretch and then staple. I'm going to undo the, the other staple on the other side, my right, your left. Stretch. Release the middle staple. And staple. I'm going to go to the side. Doesn't matter which side. Um, I'm going to undo one staple. And I'm going to bring it down a little further on this side. And staple. And fold staple, staple. And do the same thing on this side. I'm going to staple. And we're going to take this tin staple out. A little pull. I'm going to go to the last side. Okay. Take that middle one out. Let's just turn it over to see how we're doing here. Nice. 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 It's the tension that I want. Now we're going to come to the middle, right here with the staple, and I'm going to ask you to permanently staple that. Pull it straight down, right to the center of that leg hole where the leg goes. Staple. I'm going to do all of them. Staple. Not a pin staple. This is staple all the way. We're really confident now because we got most of our stretching done. Okay. One more. Loose staple in there, we'll take that out and staple. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to turn it over. And I want to show you guys, I'm going to have to come up here to show you. I want to try to get this as even as I can, pleats as evenly as I can. It's going to be a V pleat, right? I'm going to try to get it, I'm going to just turn it this way. Just take a look at these pleats just to see how they're going to line up. So the idea here is to get an even amount of fabric on each side. Now we're at a seam line too on the fabric. That This is a problem. So you see some of the original uh, seaming was not good and this is all hand stitched. This is a special fabric from Africa so they, they, they hand stitch everything so we, we're going to forgive them. But we're going to see if we can, so, so this is part of the problem solving process, right? When you're upholstering. Uh, you have to pick up on things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this first pleat done, right? So I can understand why this happens. I'm going to get this uh, because my it was und the undone part is underneath the pleat now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to staple this because I like that. Okay, now I have to make the other pleat look like this one and try to get it to center. So, so upholstery is all about problem solving, right? using the fibers and the piece of material and the piece that you're upholstering. So this actually looks pretty good. I'm going to staple that. Came out good. And then I'm going to finish with my stretching around this point. And I'm done with one side. Not bad. Not bad at all. Considering we had a problem there. Okay, so we're going to come to the other. We're going to come to this one. It's interesting. Um, this cloth is a very interesting cloth. As you've seen in part one. If you haven't seen part one on the my cloth, you should you should look at it um, because there's an introduction to that that has a lot of information about mud cloth by Kathleen, Catherine, sorry, and she's she's really good. I mean, she she explains it in a much better way than I can. I'm only the one doing it, right? So I like this pleat, and now notice I'm trying to bring the pleat to meet if I can or close to it. And you know what I think is good about about your pleat work, like the mud cloth, it doesn't have to be perfect nor is. Um, depending on the fabric that you're using, if you're using a solid fabric and a, you know, like a, a modern designer fabric, you're going to have to be a little bit more careful with the pleats and how and the distances in between here. But I bet if I measure this, I'm, I'm pretty close. That said, right? So, I'm going to come here with this one. 
I'll finish this one, this pleat. I'm going to give this a little bit more, maybe another staple here. I'm going to look at my hole here to see where I am at. Of course, you're welcome to use your tape measure to do this. You know, like at this point, if you want to measure this distance here, I'm using my eye. And I think I get right there. Okay, so let's do the last pleat. We're trying to line it up to the leg hole right here. Coming to the middle of the leg hole if I can. And then, there we go. You see how you got a little bit of a slack here? You can pull that out by rolling the pleat a little bit more and then pulling the pleat out like that. See that? That. I love this cloth. It does work. It does do what I want it to do. It stretches where I want it to stretch. The only thing about it is it's hand stitched in areas to piece it together. Those are problem areas, but we did overcome that problem. So look, I've got it all stapled. I'm going to take a look at it from this side. Just to show the camera. Looking at all my pleats. And just for fun, because I did this by I did this by eye only. I'm going to take my tape measure and I'm going to measure the pleats to see how close I was. And I'm not going to change them. I'm just curious to see where I'm at. So let's just see, we're five inches there. Okay, I think this was my problem one. We're five inches there at the top of the pleat. It's all done by eye. I'm five inches at the top of the pleat. And I'm four inches here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just let this out a little bit more. Look at this. This stuff is so pliable that I actually can move my pleat work around. Look at that. So let's see what that is now. A five inch. So I guess if I have any complaint about my work, it's too perfect compared to the, the mud cloth, which, which has imperfections. But that's the nice thing about this mud cloth that I like. It's all handmade in Africa. It's beautiful. So now look, I've got the bottom. I'm going to trim up the bottom around the legs. Okay. And let's just grab a leg to show you one leg. I'm going to trim the rest up later, but I want to show you. Just take one leg out. So on the other uh, stool that I did, I anticipated some shipping that was, might happen on that. When this one here, we're not going to be anticipating the shipping, so we can finish this. It can be finished. So what you do is, You've got some screws in here. This will go in like so, right? Beautiful, right? And actually, but before you do that, right, I'm going to show you a little trick. So um, the, the, the legs are going to go in like this. So because it's not being shipped as permanent, it's going to be pretty permanent, the legs. So I'm going to tighten those legs up in a minute to show you. I'm going to trim first of all all the way around here. If you don't have a sharp pair of scissors, you may want to try to trim this in layers. really hard to cut all that layers. It is very thick, this, this cloth, this mud cloth is very thick. Okay, the easy way. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take little pieces of cambric, the Celestra cambric, which is the lesser of the two cambrics. The other one is the antique cambric. When I say lesser, lesser quality, believe it or not, but it has more pliability. It does what you want it to do. The antique cambric we use for antiques. Um, we don't usually use it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut four pieces of this in strips about three inches, let's say. Three inches and about six inches long. It doesn't have to be perfect. You'll see in a minute why. Four. Okay. So we're going to take each one of these and we're going to, we're going to fold it like a, across here first. And we're going to get a couple of staples there. And we're going to fold it to make it look neat on this side, covering our, our messy edges of the mud cloth, right? Okay, and then we're just going to do a little trim here, like so. I'm going to do that on all four. And fold that. Make it look neat. Neaten it up.
one more. I'm going to try to trim this just a little bit more back there. Okay, we got all four of them uh, at the edges that we want in front of the leg. Now we're going to just place our legs in, and we're going to push. We're going to push it to the front like so. I don't know if you saw that action I did, but what it does is it nestles up nice against the the leg, and uh, we're ready for our screw holes in there. Let me just show you with this one. I'm going to actually not move it this time. I'm going to show you. So make sure that uh, our leg is faced the right way. It goes in like this. You'll see that you see the receptacles for the screws right here. They go they go frontwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this forward. Look, did you see that when I did? And then push down. It really gives it a nice finish on the front. Isn't that nice? And we'll do the other ones. Make sure you got it going the right way. And push in first. See that action? Watch I'll show you again. Make sure you grab, you don't want to go this way in other words, you push it in and then you're twisting it like so. Okay, we're ready. Okay, so I want to show you, I've got, I've got uh, three and, and a half legs on, so I wanted to show you what I did. So they come with bolts, you want to put the washer on, you want to line up your legs, which we just showed you, have a nice finish on this side, and you get these screwed really tight. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be closing this up, so we want to make sure that these are tight. So this one's going to go in, we get an Allen wrench with this particular kit, we got an Allen wrench which was kind of nice, and then we're going to really tighten that up, I just have that one screw to do, and I just want to show you how tight these legs are, really, I, I kind of like the construction, it looks like a simple construction, but it really goes together nice and easy, so we want to make sure that we get all of them, you know, really tight, I've tightened these ones up, so look, they're all nice and tight. So now I have my finish on my outside of the leg. Now we're going to put the inside portion of the cambric on. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this on like so. We're going to fold one side first. Get a couple of staples all the way. No pin staples. All the way. That's what I like about this stuff. It's pretty forgiving. It's, it does what you want it to do the first time. You might be wondering, why is any pin staple in the cambric? Well, you can do that if you're not sure. But the more experience you get, the cam this cambric, the Celestra, really works well with the, f with the first staple. That's what I like about it. So look what I'm doing though. It doesn't mean you can't do anything to stretch it. I am stretching it lightly away from those two staples and two more staples, right? Going to do an end here. Going to trim it up a little bit. Going to get two staples in here. Going to have a nice looking finished product all the way around after we do this. So on the on the first mud cloth, I kind of like what they had. They had a, a, a zippered uh, piece of cambric, which you can do that. Not on this cambric. You need a heavier cambric and not the antique either. Um, they had a special cambric that they used to do the zipper. Um, I liked it because that was, I think that was being shipped, so we kept the cambric. Uh, just in case the legs have to come off. This one here, I don't think it's going to ship, so we can finish it. Now that doesn't mean you can't get at the legs. Uh, to, in order to get at the legs, you just take remove the, the interior cambric. If you can do it carefully, you can get at the legs, like for instance, to tighten a leg up over, over time. Maybe one will loosen. Okay, so we have all four. Now you need to cut it, okay? This needs to be cut. I'm going to, for the sake of the camera, I'm just going to try to cut it. If you at home, I'm going to do this first one. You won't see it a lot of it, but then I'm going to do the other one. I'm going to go straight, and then I'm going to make what we call a V-cut. Some people call it a Y-cut, too. And it's, it's actually one cut to the center, and then you V, you v off to get to the edges of the leg. So, actually, I'm going to finish this one off while, I'm, while the camera's there. I think that's a good angle for the camera. And stay I, I pleat. I'm going to show you this slowly now. I pleat around the leg like this. Look how nice this stuff kind of <laughs> melts into where you want it. I did that with one hand. You can't do that with the antique cambric. The Celestial is what you want. Look at that. That's a good finish on that. So I'm going to show you this this way here. It's going to come down straight. 
straight to about an inch and then I'm going to V off this way and I'm going to V off this way. I'm going to kind of tuck that in as a pleat and tuck this in as a pleat. Uh, Undercover is working really nice with this, with this pleat work on the camber. Because look at it, it almost like, you almost can't see. I'll show you. I'll hold this up to the camera after I finish all my, all my pleat work. You almost can't see that it's pieced in there. That's how good this stuff is. But some people have different, different ideas. That's fine. But I like this stuff. Okay, we're going to do another cut here. We're going to be straight. And then we're going to do a V. And I'm going to do it that way there. Watch this. With that one hand, I can, I can work this. I can work this material over the over our work, over our piece that we put in front of the leg. And staple. And staple now. Look at that. See what I'm doing with my hand, I'm just checking to make sure there's no staple that didn't go in, sticking up a little bit, I would take care of it, but I'm doing that gently, right? Got one more. Good. I'm getting it nice around that, around that leg. Nice pleat work. Got a little piece of cambric sticking out, which I put Tucked in. I'm going to give it one more check. Flip it up. I'm going to clean it off. And I'm done. There you go. Uh, Malaysian mud cloth number two done with the pneumatic staple gun. And if you want, just for fun, compare the way the two of them were done by hand and one, and one with the pneumatic stable gun. You see how, how fast it is. But, you know, I don't want to give the illusion that all fibers and fabrics are that fast. But this one certainly was. And we put it together nice. We got our nice pleats on the side. They're about equal. They go nicely with this uh, beautiful mud cloth from, from Mali.